Hello and welcome to Tech 18. I am Hamad Adnan and in this video we are going to discuss about what are the main areas we need to learn in Power BI. If you are starting your journey in Power BI, I am not covering here in this topic about the SQL and data warehousing and all the other part for the data engineering side but only specific to Power BI. So what are the things which you need to learn? If you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. Now let's get started. So now when it comes to Power BI, there are major four areas. One is Power Query, other is the DAX, third is Online Power BI Service and the fourth is for Developer or Embedded Functionality. So we'll cover one by one now. So when it comes to Power BI, Power BI we can use it in three main areas. One is Data Flow, other is Data Mart and the third is Data Set. So when initially Power BI started, there was just a data set and later on they have added the functionality of data flow and recently they have added about the data mart. So the data flow and data mart, both of them are completely online. We don't have option to do this in Power BI desktop. Whereas for Power BI data set, we can do everything. Whatever we do as a Power BI report in our Power BI desktop, when you publish this report, it goes into a data set in Power BI service. So Power Query can be used on these technology features in Power BI. Not only in Power BI, we can also make use of this in Excel. We can also make use of this in Power Apps as a data flow part. So now the data flow and data mart, even though we are using it in Power Query, but this data is we can able to consume it in your Power BI report. So let's say for an example, uh, we are making a data set Power BI report where you are importing information from your Excel, which is in SharePoint and the SQL Server, which is also available on your on-prem. And also there are data flow and data mart which you want to connect in your that same report that's also possible. And that's why I have given it a different color that using a Power Query you can create data flow and data mart and that data warehouse or data flow data mart you can use it in your Power BI data set. I hope this is clear for you now. And the next thing is about DAX. So DAX we can use in our regular Power BI desktop, we can make reports and in the data mode also we can create our measures using DAX. So that's a new functionality. This DAX is not available in data flow, but you can make use of this in data mart. So that's best use of this one. And using a report uh, data set, we can create Power, Power BI report. So in Power BI desktop, it maybe looks like a one single file, but when you publish this into a Power BI service, then it converts into two different files. One is a report, other is data set. So that's why we can create multiple report from one single data set in Power BI service data set using that. And when you create a data flow, it's not going to create your report, but you need to add that into your Power BI desktop and then you need to use it on to your report. Whereas for Power BI data mart, if you create that, Power BI will automatically create you a data set and then you can create your Power BI reports on top of that. And the third one is Power BI service. Right, so the data set, Power BI service and Power BI report, all this functionality comes into Power BI service. So in Power BI service, there are multiple areas where we need to, we can learn. So one is majority of this one is the security, obviously the role level security kind of thing and other things management, the sharing of the report to other users, all these things can be handled using the security in Power BI service. And also the tenant setting, if you want to enable some features throughout your tenant level, you can also do that using your admin tenant settings and also the capacity management. If you're using a Power BI premium features, then the capacity management things, everything you can control it in the tenant settings. Now, when it comes to Power BI Mobile, we have a Power BI Mobile app. From there, we can use this Power BI Mobile applications. Uh, whatever report we do, we can view that in our mobile app apps here. And the next thing is the deployment pipeline. So every software development has the feature of the versioning as well as the features of development, testing and production before going into production release, they want to test this and then before that, they will have a different different environments for that. So the same thing we can also apply it here. The developer can develop the report and then publish into a development workspace and then we can test it out using a quality system and using the different databases, different sources for that. And finally, if everything is goes well, we can make use of this in to a production release throughout the organizations. So that we can make use of that feature using a deployment pipeline. And the last one is about the metric here. So metric is nothing but previously it was mentioned as a goals, Power BI goals. And here are the metric. If you want to track some 
of your strategic planning into your organizations like apprentice percentages of your total company and also your quality and also your sales target in a single window how this performance track over the year over the months or a daily tracking basis you can do that using a single screen and that is called a power bi metric so all this functionality whatever we have discussed here everything is almost covered on my channel if you haven't seen that just go and check out the playlist options where you can find most of your options here so the last part of this one is power bi service is apart from all this functionality we can make use of the power bi service using a power bi rest apis the most of the companies want to refresh the data set using a different agent like a batchman job they can make use of the rest apis so that we can refresh the data set and data flows and also we can make use of power bi xml endpoints if you want to consume your data set into a different applications like tableau we can also make use of xml endpoints but for this you need a power bi premium license and also the external tools the famous external tools like there are multiple external tools are there but majority of them people are using is like tax studio and the tableau editor so tax studio is completely free where you can see your how tax performance calculation works and the metrics of your entire power bi report and where you can see the cardinality and everything we can make use of that sql bi team has made up an amazing video series on that please go and check out that video as well the tableau editor there are two versions 2.0 and 3 and 3 is basically the premium versions which we need to pay a separate license whereas the 2 is entirely free and majority of our work we can also make use of that like for example the calculation groups perspective we can make use in tableau editor and the last part is the power bi developer or embedded so the individual software vendors isv like for an example uh, we have a different different software vendors like for example zoho or udo even though they have their own uh, the application platform for analytics if they don't have that application if they want to build power bi as an analytical tool they can also build the power bi report using their data and then they can embed power bi report onto your application itself so whoever the users they have the customers they can able to view the analytics of their data but the interface should be like power bi embedded into their own application so those people can make use of that and the other people is like if you are building a custom visuals for power bi there are 100 plus custom visuals available in a power bi app source if they want to do that they can make use of this developer part here when you now look into this picture this looks like a huge thing right but you don't need to worry about all these things being as a developer if you're just starting up for power bi you just need to learn power query and dax functionality and also about reporting visualization part so the first two things which covers here covers majority of your power bi job most of the companies they have a separate admin for controlling all this activity in power bi service and some of them may not if you are a small and medium sized business they will have they will not have a separate person for these activities but when you have going a larger enterprise then they have a separate person separate team for that to take care of the power bi service activities and this one is specifically for ISVs and building a custom visuals. So you don't need to worry about Power BI development or embedded part if you are not going focusing on that area. I hope this made a complete picture about the Power BI and where you need to main focus on your area so that you can learn and expertise in Power BI. So as I said, majority of the things is already covered in my channel. There are still a part of things which I need to focus on. I will also do that in our future upcoming videos. And also about the Python report which I haven't mentioned here, you can also make use of that if you want to build up a pixel perfect report to export into a PDF like invoice or packing list, you can also make use of that Python report. If you like this video, just click on the big thumbs up button. If you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. But make sure to turn on the notification on your devices. Share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any queries and feedback, just post it on the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in the next video.